Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a video on test-driven development or TDD, which is writing tests before you write any code. It's a whole different set of skills and you have to learn kind of like a testing framework to get really good at it, but it is very well worth it. Some of the benefits of test-driven development are writing code, only the code that is necessary to make the test pass. So you don't over-engineer all your code and your applications and you have just the bare minimum to be able to get everything working as you need it to. Another benefit is you'll have a nice suite of regression tests at the end of it. So instead of trying to backfill and write them all at the very end, which almost no one ever goes back and backfills their tests, then you do it all up front and you can fall back on that. And it's really nice to have that at your back. Another benefit is it allows for what's called relentless refactoring. So you can pull out chunks of your code into a file or, you know, change the, the order of operations and your code still functions the same way. And you can verify that by having a nice suite of regression tests like we mentioned. Then you don't have to worry about keeping all that logic in your head or if you're on a multi-person team, making sure that you're communicating and all of those people have all the functionality in their head. All right, let's jump into it. So we're going to go to our terminal here and I already have mine open. I have this directory, it's just a directory I have under YouTube so that I can organize things, but we'll be under Ruby tutorials. So we want to make a new folder so that we can put all our code in one spot. So we'll make a directory and do make dir and we'll just call it tdd. We're going to do the game rock, paper, scissors. So we'll cd or change directory into our tdd folder. And once we're in here, we can do ls, nothing's in here. So we'll say touch to create a file and we'll call it game.rb. Now you can open up your favorite editor. I'll use VS Code or Visual Studio Code in this tutorial. We'll need to install Minitest, which is a testing framework so we can write tests against our code. To do that, we'll say gem install Minitest and we'll hit enter. And that will install uh, at the global level. So if we wanted to have this specific to our project, we would do this differently. But for now, getting us off the ground and running, this is how we'll do it. All right, so we will come over here to game.rb and we will make sure that Minitest is configured and running for us. So we'll type require and just follow along here on your own machine. We'll do Minitest auto run. And then we need to describe our test. So we'll just do a basic example here. And this will be first test. So we'll say describe, and it has to be in a describe block. Then we'll say it returns true. And in here we'll do an assert equals. And this is mini test syntax, so we'll do a test that is passing, close the block here with end, and this test should pass for us. So we'll come back over here to our terminal and type ruby game.rb. And if we run that, oh, we have an error here. I need to make this assert equal. We'll run it again, and it passes for us, which is excellent. Uh, you can see prior here, I noticed that our method did not exist. This is a, a good error message in Ruby to know that you're calling the wrong method. All right, let's go back and make sure we can do a failing test. So we'll change the second argument to false. And in here, we'll do the same and run Ruby game.rb. And we see it fail, which is excellent. So our test suite is working. And for simplicity, we'll just have all our code in this one file, and then we'll refactor it here a little bit later and show you the power of that. So we wanted to create the rock, paper, scissors game. So let's do that. Rock, paper, scissors. And for our first test, let's say that it returns Player one wins when 
rock versus scissors. So what we're going to do here is outline our test. And there's three different parts to a test. And you can call them different things. One example is the three A's. Assemble. Act. And assert. And so assemble is setting up whatever the test wants to put together so that you can make your test do something in a certain state. Act is the action that you're testing. You could also call it this action. And then assert is actually asserting either true or false, which is what we started with. So the first thing we had was only an assertion. For us, we're gonna do action. So this is gonna be rock, paper, scissors, new, and we'll call this the play method. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new class called rock, paper, scissors, create a new object of it, and then call the play method. And we need to pass in each of the player's throws in here. So we'll do rock and scissors. I'll mention that for this test, it's really good to have good explicit tests instead of having something like it passes, uh, you know, something like it should pass. Uh, this is not as helpful as you're debugging it later on. And so having something like returning a certain result when certain conditions are met is a really good test name. So keep that in mind. For us, this is our action. We'll assign this to a temporary variable called result. And then in our assertion, we will say assert equals, oops, our result should be player one wins and whatever our actual result is. So this should fail for us right now. And so if we do our Ruby game.rb, it looks like we have an uninitialized constant, rock, paper, scissors. So let's create that. So we don't have a good failing test. This is all compile time stuff. So if we, here, let's do this above and say class rock, paper, scissors, then let's run our test again. And it says undefined method play for this object. So what this is saying is we have a rock, paper, scissors object denoted by this, and it doesn't have a play method. So let's go add that. Now we can say play and we'll have player one, player two, and we'll run our test one more time. And it looks like we expected to have player one wins and our actual result was nil, which is the default return if we don't put anything inside of this method. So let's just hard code it. Do player one wins and this should pass our test. Excellent. All right, so we have our first passing test. Uh, this is all the code that's needed to pass it, so why would we need anything else? We can ship it to production, right? Well, let's make this a little bit more interesting and add a couple more test cases here. So we'll do another one where player one wins and whenever scissors and paper are thrown, then we'll kill these comments here. You get the idea. We'll leave it on the first one. Scissors and paper. So scissors beats paper. So player one should win in this scenario as well. So let's run our test. And both of those are passing, which is excellent. Now let's do one where player two would win to make sure that we are implementing things correctly. So player two should win whenever scissors versus rock is thrown. So we'll do scissors and rock. And this one will say player two wins. So we'll run this again and we have a good failing test. So now this should provoke us to implement some other logic. And so 
Now we need to get a little smarter in our implementation. Add an if statement. So if player one, if their throw is rock and player two's throw is scissors, then player one should win. Else, let's implement this. Else, player two wins. We'll end that. So this gives us the first implementation, but we want to make sure that our new uh, new version should work. So we actually have to do scissors and paper as well. So let's implement that. And we can do a new line so that this doesn't go off of the page too far. So we'll do scissors for our second test and paper. And so rock and scissors is this one. Scissors and paper is the second one. And then scissors and rock should be covered by our else statement. So let's run this. And it works. All right. So let's flesh this out a little bit more. And we'll say whenever player two wins, it should be for paper and scissors. So paper, scissors. And you can see a little bit of a pattern here. We have to go through each of the different inputs. So there's rock, paper, and scissors and there's rock, paper, and scissors for each side. We also have to implement something for a tie, which we'll get into here in just a second. So let's flesh out player one and player two first. So player one should lose this one, so player two should win. And does this work? It does, all right, let's keep going. How about player two should win whenever it is rock? versus paper. So we'll do rock here, paper here, and that should allow player two to win. Let's implement that. And that works for us. So you see how we're, we're kind of rolling through and getting this going without keeping all of the information in our head. The nice thing is you get it all into tests and then you run them and you can continue to implement and increase your complexity in your code. And so you can see we haven't had to change anything so far. So let's do this last one for player one where we will do, let's see, we've got rock and then scissors. So we need to do one for paper where player one wins. So paper will beat rock, paper and rock. So this should allow player one to win run this and it does not. So this now forces us to implement this next piece. So we'll implement paper for player one and rock for player two. And that would allow player one to win, run our tests and we're green. Awesome. So now we have all the cases finished for player one, all the cases finished for player two, and we need to now implement if there's a tie. So if both players do the same thing. So we'll call this a tie. So when, actually let's do this an easier way. We'll duplicate this whole line and we will modify all these at the same time. And so when scissors and scissors and scissors, paper and, oh, I can't get that second one to work. Paper and paper. And then rock and rock. So these need to match, so it will be a tie. 
All right, so these are all of our ties, different scenarios. And we can go to our test here. We should see three that fail. All right, and so we do. So we see three failures here out of our nine tests. Let's go back and implement that. So we'll scroll up and up here, we'll do an else if, and if player one equals player two, so the same throw, then we wanna reply with tie. So this should cover us in all three cases. We could verbosely do where paper and paper and scissors and scissors, but this covers us in all three of those cases. So let's go back and run our test and we're good. So this is an example of doing test-driven development in Ruby. Now, I promised that refactoring is also easier here. So let's actually do that. So let's do a new file inside of VS Code here, and we'll call it game test.rb. Now let's move all of our tests out of this file. So you see, I don't have any tests in here now. And we'll move it into this game test.rb. We also need to require that file. So we'll do a require relative of game.rb. This is our implementation. These are our tests completely split out. And we can see if we run the tests again, which we will have to do by changing the name of the file. So do ruby game test.rb. And we run into an error. Oh, we didn't put it in the TDD directory. So let's move that. And let's try it again. And it works. So we now have two separate files and we know that our functionality works in game. We could enhance this and say, you know, do a rock, paper, scissors, spaceship to increment the functionality and we know how to test that and make sure that the rest of our functionality works exactly like how we wanted it to. I hope you learned something in this video. I really love Ruby and love doing test driven development. So I'll have more videos like this. If you like this video and you learned something, hit the like button and click subscribe and I'll see y'all later. Thank you.